There have been countless films over the years chronicling the life of Elvis Presley. Even more intriguing are the various conspiracy theories concerning what really happened to Elvis. Look out, Mama. Unable to accept that the king had died on a toilet, the idea of him still being alive has floated around for years, popping up in movie after movie. No other film appeared to have quite as much fun with this idea than Bubba Hotep. His fighting of an ancient mummy became quite the cult hit, and rumors of a sequel started, yet never materialized. Today on The Horror Movie That Almost Was, we're taking a look at Bubba Nosferatu, Curse of the She Vampires. In 2003, Bubba Hotep really took the horror world by storm. It gained cult status rather quickly due to its wacky premise, stellar leads, and unique aesthetic. For those unaware, Bubba Hotep takes place in a nursing home in Texas, where an aging Elvis Presley, played brilliantly by Bruce Campbell, teams up with fellow resident JFK, played by Ozzie Davis. And yes, you heard that right. These two take on this ancient mummy that is stealing souls at the home due to them being easy pickings. The film was more than just a simple creature feature though, it also dealt with the interesting concept of whether or not Campbell's Elvis was actually the real Elvis Presley, or simply an impersonator. It plays with this notion, while even giving a good reason for how he could have gotten away with it, but there's always a form of doubt towards this claim. You were an Elvis impersonator, remember? That doubt is only greatened with the introduction of this man. You may have heard me refer to him as JFK earlier, and yeah, that's right, I mean that John F. Kennedy. The character claims his skin was dyed, and that's why he's black. No offense, but President Kennedy was a white man. So are both these men just old and senile, misremembering their past, or are they actually who they say they are? It's a fascinating question to ponder, and because of the way the film is structured, arguments could be pretty much made for any scenario. I've always taken it as Elvis is telling the truth, while Kennedy is simply a bit of a kooky old man. But again, it's very up to interpretation. One of the magical aspects of Hotep is Elvis's friendship with JFK. Their interactions are both fun and endearing, Hey, you're not as stupid as some folks made you out. And are a big reason as to why the film works so well. While Campbell is an old man makeup to increase his age, Davis was legitimately 40 years Bruce's senior and sadly passed away just two years after the film's release. While his character died in the first film, so did Campbell's, so it wouldn't have been surprising to see some creative way to bring him back in a sequel. With his death though, the decision was made for the writers. So without this friendship, what other option do the filmmakers have? Enter Paul Giamatti. With the development of the sequel stretching into an endless abyss, the film's director, Don Cascarelli, went on to a different project. John dies at the end. Here, he met actor Paul Giamatti, who he immediately struck up a wonderful working relationship with, and the decision was made to add Giamatti to the Hotep sequel in the role of Colonel Tom Parker. After the cult success of Hotep, it seemed all but certain that Coscarelli and Campbell would reteam for a sequel. However, the two didn't appear to see eye to eye when it came to the creative direction. During the commentary for his film, My Name is Bruce, Campbell said that the disagreements had become too much and that he would not be involved in the film. How exactly do you do a sequel without the main star? Well, replace him with Ron Perlman, of course. While there's nothing wrong with recasting a character, there's something about replacing the lead actor that automatically takes some of the shine away from any potential sequel. Hell, look at Nightmare Part 4, where Patricia Arquette was replaced by Tuesday Night. The change in casting took away most of the emotional gut punch of the character's murder and instead feels like we're meeting her for the first time. Once Bruce departed, it was stated that the film would be a part of a trilogy and that there would be a different actor playing Elvis in each film. It's unclear whether this was always the plan or something that Cascarelli just decided to do once Campbell left, but either way, it's something that could easily work given the pulpy nature of the story. It's still sad to see such a key element of the original not return for another entry, but if anyone could make do, it's Coscarelli. So what exactly would Curse of the She-Vampires be about? Well, it opens right at the end of Hotep, with Nurse Ella coming out and reviving our hero with CPR. With Elvis's only friend, JFK, having passed, he teams up with Ella. Or, more accurately, she agrees to take him to a different nursing home in New Orleans. 
This is where the sequel follows a similar blueprint as the first film, with Elvis being in a different area, but still having to take down an ancient evil within the confines of his nursing home. Just replace a mummy with a vampire. Blood. The fun comes with some of the flashback scenes, where a young Elvis is making a movie called, well, wouldn't you know it, Curse of the She-Vampires. This production was an absolute mess, and it turns out it was run by Giamatti's Colonel Parker character. He was a vampire just trying his best to break into the business, and thinks that Elvis is the only way he'll succeed. Sure, it may not exactly receive an Oscar for best screenplay, but it's easy to see all the fun that could be had with this story. In particular, the Colonel character appears to be the one that would really stand out, with his many jabs at the movie industry and his fascinating love-hate relationship with Elvis. It's rumored that one of the reasons She Vampires struggled to enter production was the similar properties released from Seth Graham Smith. While Bubba Hotep saw an aged Elvis fighting otherworldly creatures, his fighting of vampires seemed to tread similar ground to Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, where a historical figure was reimagined to be fighting vampires. When that film bombed at the box office, backers were scared away from the Bubba sequel. In fact, Coscarelli and Giamatti seemed so interested in the concept of continuing, as they called it, the Bubba franchise, that it wasn't just Curse of the Vampires that they were looking at. In fact, Bubba Roswell was another sequel that they were interested in making. Given the name, it's easy to deduce that this would have seen Campbell's Elvis character come to Roswell and have misadventures with an alien. The ending of She Vampires even had a tease for another film entitled Bubba Sasquatch, Killer Apes of the Northern Woods. No other concepts were mentioned, but it was clear how much love they had for the property and hoped to make a proper franchise someday. One aspect that I feel I need to mention is the title of Bubba Nosferatu. This still gets the point across that it's a sequel to the original and it's about vampires. The only issue is really the fact that the first film is named Bubba Hotep because that's the name of the demon mummy. That mummy has been vanquished, therefore utilizing Bubba Hotep in the name wouldn't make a lot of sense. The beginning of Hotep includes this title screen where they break down the name, showing that Hotep is simply the name of an Egyptian god. Then the Bubba part is just supposed to represent someone from the south. So as long as they keep whatever new villain as someone that's southern based, it could work as a continuation. But it still feels messy. There had been rumors that Campbell could be swayed to return, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. The long time in development seemed to have taken some of the shine away for Bruce Campbell. He was quoted as saying, I killed it. I killed it for me. I told the creators I didn't want to dance around it anymore. I feel that the first one was a nice little gem, and you don't have to make a sequel for everything. Don Coscarelli, God bless him, go make it. You know, get somebody else. They had Ron Perlman at one point, knock yourself out. I don't want to stop you from making this, but I don't want to do it. So that one I'm just going to let go. Sequel talks have seemingly died completely. The more time that has passed, the more that the original film appears lost in the shuffle. While Coscarelli is still in the business, he doesn't appear to show much interest in bringing it to the screen these days. And clearly, Campbell has put the property in his past. Eventually, as seems to be the theme lately, we received a sequel in the form of a comic book. Only, this wasn't based on the she-vampire story. Instead, it was a team-up, mixing up Campbell's Elvis character with another of his famous portrayals, Ash Williams from the Evil Dead series. Released by Dynamite Entertainment in 2019, it's hard not to wonder whether this will be the last that we see of the Bubba Hotep brand. If it is, then I know that I'm grateful we were able to see Campbell inhabit the persona of Elvis Presley and provide us a role that is second only to Ash in his long and storied career. While it's disappointing we were never able to see the continued adventures of Campbell's Elvis on screen, we can count ourselves lucky to even experience it in the first place. While it's from a different franchise, I feel this really sums things up. Hail to the king, baby. Thanks for enjoying the show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Horror Videos channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest horror videos. We're an independent company, and we appreciate all of your support.